Hello everybody! So this is the look that we're going to be doing today. I call it Pretty and Pink because it's got lots of pink, lots of sparkly glitter. I feel gorgeous. So I'm just going to transform out of this getup so that I can take you along and show you how I do my makeup. Let's go! Oh! Oh my gosh. Sometimes this thing doesn't like to work. Sorry you had to see that. <laughs> okay, so let's get into Drake makeup. Let's go. Alright, so first things first, so I just... Maybe I just got home from work and I had a shower. I start with a clean face. Um, I sit down and first off, coffee. I like to caffeinate before a show, so while I'm doing my makeup, I like to have a nice drink. That's always nice. I always moisturize my lips. This is Blistex Lip Medics. Because <clears throat> I use liquid lipsticks and they tend to dry up your lips quite a bit and become flaky and not look great. So I keep my lips nice and moisturized and soft and plush underneath it all. <laughs> all right. So because I have shaved eyebrows, these are not covered at all, I just don't have eyebrows. Um, I like, you can see a little bit of like, um, blue color coming in through there because of the hair underneath. So I like to use something of a pink or an orange to cover that before I put any sort of foundation on. And that just helps tone out the blue. So you don't see any kind of dark shadows or anything from um, facial hair coming through your foundation when you're in drag. Um, so I use, this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Contour Palette in the shades medium. So this is a medium palette and it comes with this lovely blush color which is sort of like a pinky orange which I find works very well when I'm covering my brows. Um, now I've chosen to shave my brows because this summer has been a little bit busier with drag than it has been in past years. And covering my brows with glue stick is a step. Like, it's a whole like chapter of drag makeup that I decided to take out of my book. Um, cause it, you have to put it on, you put on your layers and layers and layers of glue stick and then you have to let them dry and then I found when I was like sweating and stuff, the glue would reactivate and then my makeup would start running and the glue would get all soft and it was just like not what I wanted. If you're doing a lot of like high dance numbers and you're sweating a lot, then definitely glue is not the best as a part of your makeup. So I have chosen to just have no eyebrows. And it's made my makeup like a lot easier. Less time consuming. So yeah, I do draw on my eyebrows every day unless I'm not going out and then I'm just like a browless house gremlin in the dark hiding away from people. <laughs> um, I do take this pink around my mouth area, especially if you're one of those queens who has like, you shave your beard for drag and um, you have a lot of facial hair so there's definitely like a lot of, you can see like a shadow. Definitely um, covering it with something orange or pink is going to be beneficial because it just tones out that all that blue blue color. <clears throat> Anyways, so there we go. And next is foundation. So I like to use, the, um, I've used a, a few different ones. 
in my times with drag. So I have used Ben Nye cream sticks, which look like this. And it's a cream foundation. <clears throat> and I have used um, the Sephora cream foundation sticks as well. And then the one that I'm using now is called, it's by Mayron Makeup, it's called the Cream Blend Stick. And out of those three that I have um, experimented with, I would say Mayron is the best. I like it the best because it's super duper creamy. You can put a, a little bit on and it spreads out like, like butter. And it's so nice for your skin. It doesn't feel soft. It doesn't feel, um, it doesn't dry your, your skin out. It makes it feel like soft. So, where is my lid? Whatever. Um, so I apply this. You can see I use it so much I'm running out. So I use my brush. This is my buffing brush or that I use for foundation. So I just get in there. And on we go. I just apply it to areas of my face and then I blend it out. just start buffing it into my skin. Making sure I have an even coverage all over my face. <clears throat> so my makeup has changed quite a bit over the years. I've been doing Jake for about, um, what is it now? Close to five years, I'd say. I was experimenting with drag makeup um, a few year for a few years before I actually ever like had the opportunity to get on a stage and do it. Um, and I had always been kind of I was always interested in makeup. I was always watching <clears throat> Broadway shows, Cirque du Soleil. I would look at their makeups and all of the tricks and blending that they would use and all of the colors and I was really fascinated by designs like that. Colorful makeups and the, the like the whole illusion of it. Just how you go from like your everyday face to something just like fantastical and something else. Um, I started doing, like, working makeup on my face when I was probably 10-ish. So I'd watch these shows, I would watch, like, I had, um, Cats, the musical, on VHS, I would watch all of that, and I would see all of their makeup, and I'd want to, like, reproduce it on my face. <laughs> the very first times I would ever use makeup was... I actually used um, watercolor pencil that were meant for like you dip them in water and then you use them on like like paper as watercolor. Anyways, I used those on my face, <laughs> um, <clears throat> and honestly, my parents were like super, super um, supportive because I was always an art artistic kid when I was growing up. I would do a lot of art classes and painting and such um so <clears throat> after like a while of doing that on my face my mom would start giving me um little bits from my, like her collection that she wasn't using so like eyeliners um eyeshadows i think and then later on in years my brother would start gifting me like actual stage makeup like ben nye eyeshadow palettes and stuff like that for Christmas which was so cool it's it's really really awesome to have like a family who's so so supportive of like my makeup and 
and artistic skills that I like to pursue and, and challenge. So I started doing makeup when I was like when I was a kid, and I always had a, a fascination with it. So <clears throat> the fact that I get to do this as an adult and I love doing it as a kid um, is, is really awesome. So I loved those Broadway shows and everything. And I was like, I want to go and do that when I'm older. When I'm all grown up. And now I get to. And I get to do these these shows and be kind of like the star of my own show. Because it's like my own character. I created and I get to do. I get to make my own acts and my own dance. And I get to work with lights. And, and sometimes it's like the whole stage. Like projections and stuff. It has been so cool to work in such a creative work with just a creative like outlet because there's so much you can do with drag anyways we are at we are we have done sorry i got off on a, <clears throat> a story there um so we've got our foundation on next what i like to go in with is my highlights um and i use a product called um ben not it's from ben nye again and it is called Clown White. So this is a white cream found or uh, cream paint, I guess, in white. It doesn't look white right now because I use it a lot. <laughs> um, but I use a. Uh, if we cannot throw it on the floor. I use a brush like this, and I do all of my highlighting on my face with this and then I blend it out with a beauty blender which you will see in a moment so I always highlight underneath my eye area right up along under it and along the top of my cheekbone to give my cheeks some highlight as well So a lot of drag queens use this. This is kind of just like a drag queen staple, I would say. If you're looking to get into drag makeup or anything, this is the very versatile product. You can use it underneath your eyeshadows to make them, give them more of like a, a colorful pop. You can use it to highlight your face. You can add accents, even just like make white eyeliner with it. And this might look like super white and super crazy, but give me a second. It's all gonna make sense. It's all gonna blend out and look not like I'm a crazy person with war paint on my face. I mean, some days I feel like a crazy person with war paint on my face, but it's not the look I'm going for today. Um, that should be good. I think that's usually about what I do. This is so strange for me because I don't actually do a lot. I do live videos for my makeup, but I don't usually like talk people through like what I'm doing so sometimes like when I'm talking to you about what I'm doing I have to like talk talk to myself in my head and be like okay where are we at what are we on because <laughs> like I'm just used to just like doing it so <clears throat> all right so this is my beauty blender so I just take the white and I just start blending it into the surrounding foundation like that And I would like to say, with drag makeup, there's a lot of tricks and out there that you can learn and take into your own art, your own craft. But there is no like right or wrong way to do drag makeup. I will say that. <clears throat> I have seen 
queens do tricks and I've tried them and they just don't work for me or you know it's really just like a personal personal thing like your makeup is is you and it has to fit your style and whatever so like anything you see here it doesn't mean this is the way to do drag makeup I put on my highlighter underneath all of like my powder and everything that may not work for you you might not even use a lot of like highlighter <clears throat> I contour after everything is powder you might choose to like contour with creams at this stage there's so many ways to do drag makeup so the best way to do to find your own way is just experiment, experiment, experiment. Because like I said earlier, I was doing drag makeup for probably two years before I ever actually like went on the stage. I was experimenting with it, finding, finding videos on YouTube, watching artists, um, watching artists like in their tutorial videos and see how, how they did it and products that they used. And I went through a lot of products to find what worked best with my face and, and what I liked. So it's very personal. <clears throat> but practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. All right, so we're there. We're here with our highlighter on. Right now I'm just Taking out the creases, because if you can see, sometimes the white creases under my eye if I leave it too long, and we don't want that. And the same above my eye as well. Actually, I might take some white into my, because I'm using pink on there. <clears throat> so I'm going to use some white on my eyelid, just so that. the pink shows up a little better. And then we're gonna go in and powder it. Powder this whole unit. And set it. So I like to make sure that there's no creases on my eyelids or under my eyes. Because if I set it with powder, those creases are gonna be there. They're gonna be permanent and it's not gonna look great and smooth and flawless. Which is what we are going for today. Okay, so next is powder. After some coffee, um, I use another Ben Nye product. <laughs> um, I use Ben Nye Neutral Set um, Colorless Face Powder. So it's just like when this goes on your face and then you brush it off, sets everything and it has no color. So it's not gonna like look like you actually have powder on your face. Um, so I actually, I pour some, usually I pour some into the lid and then it gives me an easier way of working with it. So I take my powder puff. These you can buy in like, oh, well, you can buy them online. Um, even in the store, I've seen them, but they're like usually more expensive. I get, I think they do sell these, like Ben Nye sells their own. I've bought them at like Theater Garage in Edmonton. If you're there, or I think it's Don's Hobby Shop in Calgary that also has them. Super easy. You can wash these. You can throw them in the washing machine and wash them. Mine probably needs to be thrown in, thrown in the washing machine. <laughs> but anyways, I use one of these babies, and we just dip it in the powder. Boop. Get lots of powder on there, and start setting everything. So I usually... You don't have to do this, but this is the way I do it. I usually start on my jawline. And you want to like really press the powder in. Cause <clears throat> this is the step that really makes sure that your makeup is gonna last throughout your entire show or your entire day, whatever you're doing in drag. <clears throat> I don't know what you do in drag. Are you going to the grocery store? like? Going to buy some Louboutins? I don't know. Going to pay your uh, college 
your your college bills I don't know anyways you want to make sure that there's a lot of powder in your face and really press it into the foundation so that it sticks and it stays all day anyways I got some more creasing here so we're taking that out I get any more creasing, I'm gonna go right in under the eye and press that powder in. Lock it in, baby. Try not to get powder in your eye, because that sucks. Especially if you wear contacts. Oh my god. Okay. And above the eye. <clears throat> and then another step. <sighs> usually that I do is baking so that's the step that comes after this once you have all the powder on and you in liberal amounts you just sit and you sip some coffee maybe turn on a song maybe text a friend <clears throat> maybe see if somebody has replied to you on eHarmony um, and you just let it rest for a little bit because what it's doing right now is really working into the foundation and taking the moisture out of the foundation. So it's, um, they're all kind of like setting together on your face. If that makes sense, like this is an oily, like it has a oil cream, like foundation and then once you put the, the powder on top of it it's gonna take some of the moisture out of it and then you can brush it off and it's gonna have a longer life on your face instead of you just like putting the powder on and then brushing it off <clears throat> so we're gonna sit and we're gonna sip some coffee now And, um, you guys, there is something awesome happening in Red Deer at the moment. Have you been downtown? Have you seen our beautiful rainbow crosswalk? Our permanent rainbow crosswalk, which is so cool. We finally got it. <clears throat> so, um... This has taken huge efforts um, from Central Alberta Pride, working with the um, city of Red Deer. Um, and it is thanks to Central Alberta Pride and the city of Red Deer that we have this crosswalk now, which is a huge step forward. So they've been working on it for years and it's finally happened. And I think that is just so cool um, and an amazing step forward for Red Deer. Um, <clears throat> And of course, it's, it's always going to be controversial, but I think it's a huge, a huge symbol of just like <sighs> love and acceptance and community, which I think is super important, especially during these times that we are in right now. So <sighs> it makes me so happy to see that that is out there. So good job, Central Alberta Pride. Good job, City of Red Deer. That's awesome. Okay, so my face has sat for a little bit. So now I'm taking my fluffy powder brush and I'm going to brush off all of these powders. All right, there we go. Okay. Next step, you guys. We're getting somewhere now. Okay. Next step is making myself not look so white because that's not my skin tone. <laughs> and contouring. So I use a bronzing powder or something that is um, like tan. It's gonna be matching my skin tone. This is one that I got from the body shop and it's their brown bronzing powder. Um in the shade five, 
which is what I use, but they have like one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, <clears throat> I really like this one. It's just my personal personal preference. I started using it when I worked at the body shop like five, six years ago. Anyways, I started contouring with this baby. So, <clears throat> staying away from everything that I highlighted. So here, underneath my eyes and around this forehead area, but everything else I'm going to brush on this bronzing powder. So I work it into like the, the cheekbone area. Let me come back a little bit so you can see. So the thing with contouring and drag makeup is you really want to take your time with it and you really want to work with powders <clears throat> or if you're using a cream, whatever, but take your time and add a little bit, li little bit by little bit because if you add a lot, it's going to come out looking like, it's going to come out looking harsh. You're gonna have, it's gonna look streaky. You're gonna look like you have a lot of makeup on. So the trick is to make everything look a little bit more natural. And blend it. And the way we do that is adding a little bit of product over a little bit of product over a little bit of product <clears throat> until we get where we want to be. You can already see that my face on this side has a lot more definition than here. So after this base layer of color and contour is on, we'll go in with darker, a little bit darker, and start building up some more shadow in my cheekbone areas and along my forehead. to define my face even more. And I like to go down my neck with my contour colors. And what this does, instead of bringing any highlight to my neck, it kind of just takes it away, makes it neutral, you don't really look at it. Cover that Adam's apple. Okay, there we go. Alright, so then I go in with a... <clears throat> a deeper, a darker brown. So, what I do, actually, is, oh my god, my eye. I got powder in my eye. Don't do that. So, I use eyeshadows actually a lot when I'm contouring. You can buy powder contour palettes out there. But I have found some of the some of the shades that I like to use on my face and have worked the best with my skin tone have been in eyeshadow palettes and honestly, it's just powder. So, there's really like no set way you have to use makeup. Just because it's an eyeshadow, you don't have to just put it on your eye. <clears throat> Anyways, so this is the um, Too Faced, um, which one is this? It is Sweet Peach palette, I guess? I don't know. This was gifted to me by a friend, and I had wanted this palette for like a long, long time. Um, this is my favorite color out of it, actually, right here. It's kind of like a gold um, pink, pink with gold shimmer in it, and it actually smells like peach. <laughs> so, I use these ones. Caramelized, Puree, and Summer Yum. Summer Yum? Hello? <clears throat> That's me right now. Anyways, so I use a blend of them. So I kind of just blend them together on my brush. And I find that they create a nice contour color for me. So I go in right from the top of my ear. 
and you can kind of see where the shadow already is so i go from i follow that line so i go from here i don't go down i go along this line and then we blend upwards So that has given me a very warm kind of contour color. And again, <clears throat> you want to like build in layers. So especially if you're first um, experimenting with drag makeup and contouring, um, Probably use about as like half as much as I'm putting on my brush right now. Like use a little bit, blend it in, and then after a while you'll st start getting like a feel for how much product you need and and everything and where where it goes. Here we go, cheekbone, cheekbone, and jawline. So I go right along underneath my jawline. <clears throat> so if you have a less of a pronounced jawline, you can always move your head and then feel where your bone is. And that's where your line should go. And then we don't go up with it. We go down. So I like to contour more of my neck and especially where my Adam's apple is. We darken that too. So it looks more feminine and I bring shadow right down kind of like in a V here dun, dun, dun. all right so jawline and cheekbones are done and then I do my nose Like so, and then I work the color in around my hairline, not too far down the forehead, but I like to get a lot of shadow in this area here, and along the side of my temples as well. Blending, blending, blending is key. That's why we work with a little bit of product at a time. So that it goes exactly where you want it. Because if you have a lot of product on it and you go too far, then <laughs> you're going to end up with makeup where you don't want it. And then you're going to have to find a way to remove it. And then it gets splotchy and what we want so blending 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 little bits of product at a time yeah all right so we've got the face we've got the base layer um next what we work on is eyeshadows <clears throat> so for eyeshadows before i put any sort of shadow on my eye i <laughs> I, <laughs> I might have had too much coffee. <laughs> um, we're applying some more of that powder underneath my eyes because you don't want fallout. And what fallout is, is really annoying. It's when eyeshadow gets onto your cheeks or any other part of your face when you're applying it to your eyes. And it can sometimes like leave marks or smear and then you have smudges where you don't want them and it just gets messy. So this just is kind of a preventative step to go from this 
to make sure that the eyeshadow stays where it's supposed to be. <clears throat> so we're taking a eyeshadow brush and I'm going to start with the first color. So first I'm going to use mm, probably this pink. I'm going to apply that. So with my eyes, this is just like how I do it. So I go like this and I glare at you and I look right where the top of my eye lid meets my kind of like eye crease, I guess. So I apply my lighter shade right along that area. And that kind of gives me a map to go off of, of where my eyeshadow is going to be. Also, when you're working with eyeshadows, it is better, more helpful, to get a better effect with them if you apply your lighter shade first and then work to darker. The last shade that you should put on is black. <clears throat> so that's super light, but that just gives me a sense of map of where I'm getting to work off of. Be so pink today. Oh god. I got the pink eye. <laughs> pink eye. Oh I love this. I've been doing this look a lot this summer just because I love these pink eyeshadows. Anyways, I forgot to mention um what palette this is. This is the Artistry palette from Morphe. Look at all these gorgeous pinks. And browns, they're shimmery. Ugh, I love them. This, the middle pink, gives me life. Like, that's what we're using today. So, after all of this is done and blended out nicely up towards my brow area, <clears throat> we'll go in with the, the next darker shade, which is that gorgeous pink. So we put some on our brush and this one I will say be careful with Morphe eyeshadow sometimes because when you put them on there's a lot of like fallout. I don't know if you can see that but like a lot of powder is just sitting on top because it's very loose. So make sure you like kind of tap off your brush a bit and oh and so that it doesn't like, you don't get a ton of like fallout. Anyways. Now I'm going to apply this all over my eyelid. And we're going to make it super, super pink. Alright, see already? This is why, this is why we put down that layer of powder because already just from brushing it, it's kind of like flung itself onto my nose, but that's okay because we have that protective layer. So once I sweep the white or the translucent powder away, that will come off too. My makeup has changed a lot since I first started working with drag makeup to now, even in just like the past month. Really over these, these past summer months, um, my makeup has taken like a big turn from what I, I used to be doing. Last year, if you looked at it, I was doing like this large, like bold crease that went like even like up onto my brow bone. I was using like my brow bone as my crease. Um, <clears throat> and I've been experimenting more with a more of a natural eye shape because I go with like my, my natural features now. That's not 
to say my makeup is always going to be that way. The thing with makeup is it's a personal thing. So this is where I'm at now with my makeup and this is what makes me happy. And who knows, in a few months it might be something totally different. I love experimenting with makeup and drag has no boundaries and I think it's fun to experiment and not stick with the same thing over and over again, over and over again. As an artist, personally, I like to push myself and experiment with new, new colors, new eye shapes, new, new brows, new, <clears throat> new lips. Even my lip shape has changed. I'm using more of like a um, natural lip shape as um, <clears throat> I used to have like a really big, like really big overdrawn lips with like kind of like an outwards point to them. But this is kind of like my summer look that I've been using. So I think we're pink enough in the eye. We got pink eye. Like that. Which is nice. Now, to build in some shadows, I got powder in my eye again. <clears throat> I think I'll use this darker shade. Because sometimes this one is nice and light. I might use a mixture of them. But it, sometimes this one isn't like dark enough to actually make a shadow. So I'm going to start working this into the outer corner of my eye. Like so. And that's going to give our eyeball definition and beauty and drama. So it doesn't look like much now, but then we go in with black and then it really adds the drama. The drama comes. The drama comes to slay the party. Um. What was I talking about? Oh, my makeup, yeah. So, my makeup has changed a lot. And it always will change, I think. Some of my biggest inspirations I've pulled from have been um, Cirque du Soleil, of course, with all of the colors and blending and, and designs that they use in their makeups. Um, and of course, Lady Gaga. Cause I don't know if you know, but I like to impersonate Lady Gaga a lot. I do a lot of her numbers, a lot of songs. <clears throat> Especially when I first started doing drag, like that was my, I felt on fire when I was being Lady Gaga. And that really took me, impersonating her really helped me like, get comfortable on stage, I guess. Um, I love Lady Gaga. Her song's a banger, and like, uh, she's a, a wonderful, wonderful person. Well, I mean, I don't know her personally, but I like the fact that she does a lot of work other than just like singing. She has her Born This Way Foundation that helps um, children all over the world. She's put a lot of like, um, care into school and mental health for kids. She's spoken a lot about her own mental health and been open about that, which I think is super important, um, especially in these days, for celebrities to <clears throat> be visibly human, I guess, and not be like, oh, I'm, you know, it's important to see that these are people and they're they're just like you and me and everybody else. They have their own issues, daily struggles, insecurities, stress, heartbreak, everything. And she's been very vocal about her mental health and that um, it's taken her a lot, of, a lot of work. She's gone through a lot of trauma. I just like some I connect with her because she's so open and so honest and real and down to earth. Um, so the pink is done on my eyes. 
And I do want to share with you, since I'm such a Gaga freak, I do have a little collection of Gaga things. <laughs> so first, recently, I have a friend. <clears throat> His name is Garen. And he gifted me... We were hanging out one night, and um, I was talking about how much I love Gaga. And um, he was like, all right, get in my car, we're going to my house. <laughs> and I was like, okay, why? And we get there, and he brings out, he gifts me a couple things that he had of Gaga. The first of which are, is this. This, this is a bottle of her perfume that she came out with. Um, I can take off the lid and it still smells like it. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't have the chance to buy this when it was, like, in stores. But to have this collector's, like, bottle is amazing. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm so happy. Anyways, he gave me two of these. So there's a big one and then a smaller one. Amazing. <clears throat> and then he gave me the Lady Gaga singing toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it so much. Look at this. Lady Gaga singing toothbrush. It plays Born This Way and Teeth. Like, how crazy cool is that? <laughs> oh my god. Ugh. So cool. Thank you so much for those. I love them. And then I have <clears throat> a book by Terry Richardson of Lady Gaga during her um, Monster Ball tour. So it's kind of like a documentary in picture form of everything that she went through while she was on that tour. So you get a lot of like backstage photos of Gaga costumes, backstage life, shows, like, you just get a glimpse into Gaga's, like, life on tour and the fashion and the, the dirt and the grit and the grunge and the, the humanity, I think, behind all of, like, the tours. So I love this book so much. And then... <clears throat> Recently, I started getting into vinyl. I did buy myself a record player. And I started buying records. And the first one, the first records I knew that I really, really wanted were the Lady Gaga albums. So I have Lady Gaga Joanne. And I have Lady Gaga The Fame. Ugh, awesome. I love listening to them. And next at the store, I think they have, um, they have Art Pop and Chromatica. I haven't seen, what's the, what's the, Born This Way. I haven't seen Born This Way, but hopefully I get it too. So, that's my little Lady God collection, and I'm such a big fan. Anyways, back to the makeup. Into the makeup. Sorry if I sound like congested and sneezy now, because I have allergies, I have summer allergies, and... We have the windows open and it's a little, there's some pollen out there today. Anyways, so after the pink is done, I take another brush and I go in with black and we're going to darken that outer corner. Again, don't use a lot because you want it to be just where, right where it needs to be. There we go. I like that. <clears throat> so we're going to get rid of this powder here. And next we're going to work with eyeliners. So I line my waterline here with a pencil
making sure to blend it into my lash line as well. Comes out a little messy, but that's okay because I just smudge like um, pink and black under it. So, <clears throat> and then I go in for my top liner. So I use this, which looks like a marker, which it basically is. It's a bold, oversized felt eyeliner from The Body Shop, again. I like some of the products. Um, this is a big one, and it's just easier to color in everything that I need it to be and then I do go in with a finer tip eyeliner and really make the ends crisp but this is just to get the eyeliner on there because I do I wear big eye ugh, I wear big eyelashes <clears throat> and they're so big I feel like I don't have to be super clean and crisp with the eyeliner on top of my eyes because these eyelashes are so big when they sit on there they cover a lot of the eyeliner anyways so I just get the black on there with this pan <clears throat> so do that and then Usually I like to follow the curve of my lower line for my flat eyeliner so it would end up about here. And I love a big wing, so that's what we're doing today. finer tip and I just make sure that that end is nice and pointy and crisp. And next we're going to work on the lower lash line and do a little bit of shadowing there. <clears throat> so we'll go in with our pink again. I like to take the pink from my from my eyelid and use it underneath as like a kind of a shadow just to blend it. some black. If I can find my brush that I use for that, here it is. <clears throat> so I use a little um, smudging brush. It's just short. Excuse me, can you focus? Doesn't want to focus. Oh, no focus today. <clears throat> I just dip that in the black and then um, Add some shadow underneath the eye. Made of new metal alloys, some of which have not yet been vetted. Capable of small Okay, there we go. And I like to do a little bit of eyeliner in the corner of my eye. I think it adds some definition and gives it more of like a a cat kind of like shape. So I usually go from inner corner down and then I go across like so there we 
go. That is my eye shape. Okay. Now we're gonna work on some brows. And I use, we're going back to that Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Conjurer palette. And we use this darker shade. Get it on my brush. And start about. All right. <clears throat> Ta-da! Brow done. All right, let's have some more coffee. And next I'm going to take another clean-ish <clears throat> fluffy brush and I'm going to blend out the corner of my brow. Very slowly, very carefully. And then we're gonna set those. Okay. So now I'd add a little bit of extra contour for my nose. I actually connect this part of my nose to my brow. Like so. There we go, I like that. <clears throat> Next I'm gonna do some lips. So, um, I'm gonna use this one and then I think I have a white one somewhere or a lighter one that I like to use for, yes, I like to add some highlight in the middle of my lips. So, is this the right, yes, all right, so, liquid lip. <clears throat> and then using this lighter one, we're gonna add a little bit of highlight in the middle. This usually takes like a couple layers, a couple applications. There we go. <clears throat> so we're getting there. The look is almost complete. And next step is, now I have natural B marks on my face. I have a very tiny one here. And I have one here and one here. So I like to fill those in 
because they are part of me, so I don't like to cover them up. And the best way to do this, you can use like a liquid foundation if you're putting on a beauty mark, or a liquid li eyeliner, sorry. Um, I like to use Sharpie, just because it's so precise. A mix of this one and this one. Sort of pink and orange. And actually I do use a little like a bit of blush along my forehead contour just to tie in. Not a huge, noticeably deep, like a hugely noticeable detail, but. Alright. All right. Next is glitter, because I love glitter in my makeup. <clears throat> so I'm going to use for this one. Um, which glitter am I going to use today? Am I going to go with a white or a gold? Mm. I think we'll go with this one. All right, so the glitters that I use are from Urban Decay, the heavy metal glitters, and they come in a little gel and a little tube. So you squeeze them out and then apply them with a brush. This one is called Distortion, which is a not focusing there we go kind of a pearlescent green white glitter now what I do for these is squeeze a little bit out onto the back of my hand and then I use my brush my glitter brush specifically for glitters which has glue and glitter all over it and I use a little bit, I scoop up a little bit, and then I start applying that where I want. So I go right from the inner corner of the eye, upwards, to really define my crease. And I think this just like adds a level of definition and glamour to the makeup. I do take it up above, if you can see. I take it along my eyeshadow on the upper lid. Up to there. And I take a little bit and apply it underneath as well. Just give that kind of pop to your eye. Alright. And then, once that's done, I do like to go in with a little bit of white cream. And when I say a little bit, I use a little bit. I put some on the back of my hand and kind of like brush it out so there's not so much on my brush. And then I kind of define, I use it to define underneath my eyebrows. And that also makes my eye shape pop. There we go. So, at this point in the makeup, 
<clears throat> we got our lashes ready. Now, I would recommend using an eyelash glue. Um, there's ones that you can buy. They're by Duo and they work really well. Um, the way I stick on my eyelashes is actually using spirit gum, which I don't actually recommend that you do this, but it's the way that I have found that they stick and they're not, they don't move around. On me, I'm not going to lose a lash. <clears throat> so I use spirit gum. I use a very, very thin coat on the back of my eyelashes. And this does irritate your eyes. That's why I don't recommend it. Especially if I have like multiple shows in a week and I'm doing this a lot. Not great for my eyes. It dries like my eyelid out a lot and makes it kind of like sensitive. Kind of hurts after a while, but definitely use a lash glue. So while that is drying, I will go back in with my glitter because I forgot to do under my eye on one side here. So we'll take a little bit extra glitter there and fix that. Spirit gum, you let dry until it is tacky. It gets very, very sticky. It won't dry completely on you, but the longer you let it sit, the more it's going to be, the more it's gonna work better on your eyes or on your face or anything. You can use it to apply wigs. You can use it to apply, sometimes I put like studs and stuff on my face, the jewels. <clears throat> That's what I use it for. And, should be done by now. Ready to be a part of me. Give them a little flap. Make sure they're nice and fluffy and flared out. And I don't glue them right along my lash line. I put them on my actual eyelid. So a bit, a bit ways up there and that kind of just gives me helps hold them in a more of a flared up position because I'll show you if I had them right along my eyelash that's what I'd be working with not great so with a big lash like this I like that kind of like whew, flared look so that goes on my eyelid like so Awesome. I'm loving it. <clears throat> Final step that I will do is add some highlighter to my cheek. There we go. I'm all set. I'm all ready. This is the makeup look. Still having wonky eyelash a little bit, but it's okay. So now I'm going to transform into my hair and my costume and you'll get to see how it all fits together. So let's go. There we go. The finished look. So I've got my hair, my costume, I feel pretty and the pink. So I want to thank you so much for watching me today. 
Thank you so much, Central Alberta Pride, for supporting me as an artist and all of the other Drake artists as well in Red Deer. I hope you had fun watching me do my makeup today. And if you ever want to learn more tricks or get in touch with me, you can find me on Instagram under Kelly Elitrix. You can also find me on Facebook as Kelly Elitrix and on YouTube. I have lots of videos of my shows and makeup videos up there as well. So thank you so much again. Happy Pride Week, everybody. 